Today we are going to use a triple five timer to create a strobe navigation lighting system for an RC airplane. The triple five timer is widely used still today for many applications in the electronics world. The 555IC is very cheap and very reliable. We are going to use it to create a very simple circuit that will generate a blinking light on the tips of the wings to make it look very similar to an airliner. Let's begin with the components we will need for this project. These components are very easy to find and I'll leave a list in the description below. We're going to use a 220k resistor, 110k resistor, 150 ohms resistor, a diode, a 10 microfarads capacitor, a PNP transistor, you can try several of them, they should all work, the 555 timer IC and the LED light you will use. You'll also need jumper wires, a battery from 5 to 12 volts, and a breadboard to make the prototype of the circuit. We'll start placing the IC chip on the center of the breadboard. It's important to know the number of the pins and its orientation. We're going to place it in this orientation, taking as references these marks that you will see on the chip. If we quickly search on the internet, we will get some info about what pins are what and the schematics for the 555 timer. Let's begin building the circuit. First, we place the 220 kilo ohms resistor between the pins 8 and 7. The 10 kilo ohms goes between the pins 7 and 6. The values of these resistors will determine the frequency of the blinking of the LEDs. But we will talk about it more in a moment. Let's take a closer look to see how it is going. Make sure that the metal leads are not touching each other where they're not supposed to, to avoid any unwanted behavior. The next component is the diode. This is to protect the 555 from a reverse polarity connection that could destroy the ship. In the graphic you see that the diode is connected differently, but it's essentially the same. It goes connected to the pin number 8 and make sure to have the polarity the right way. 10 microfarad capacitor goes in the pin number 2. Then we'll make a bridge between pins 4 and 8. Then another bridge between pins 2 and 6. Then pin number 1 goes to ground. It's time to connect the PNP transistor. You can place it anywhere you want, but I'll connect it where I have plenty of space to work comfortably. We have to connect the 150 ohms resistor from the pin number 3 from the 555 to the base of our transistor. In the transistor I'm using, the base is located in the middle pin, but it can vary in different transistors, so make sure to connect it to the pin labeled as base. The emitter goes to ground and the collector goes to the cathode or negative polarity of the LED. The other side of the LED goes to connect it to the positive rail of the breadboard. You can place it anywhere you want as long as the connections are the same. All is left is to connect the power, and the circuits should work. And voila! We have our circuit working. We can connect different types of LEDs to see how they behave with it. If we replace the 220 kilo ohm resistor with another one of less resistance, let's say 1K, this is how it will behave. The blinking will be faster. You can experiment changing the values of the resistors. This will make the flash last longer or shorter or change the intervals of flashing. The flashing pattern is also affected if you change the capacitor for other values. I did this circuit many times and I also experimented with different connections, like these police lights. I also used a relay to power bigger loads, like this LED panel, but it can also work for AC light bulbs. In the description of the video I will leave the link to the interactive circuit and a schematic. In that interactive circuit you will be able to change their sister values and change anything you want to simulate the real circuit. This circuit that you see now is the original LED blinking circuit and is not using a PNP transistor and that's why it doesn't flash like the other one we just did. Notice that the LED stays on for a long period and only switch off for a short time. To swap this state, we use a PNP transistor. 
There's also a way to do it with an NPN transistor, but I find the PNP better for this circuit. Now, if we take the circuit and make some changes, like adding a new LED, and also modifying the values of the resistors, we can make something else, like this police-style lights. Here is the real circuit working. But what is real? Okay, that's a deep question we're not going to talk about. Let's continue with this video. If we want to be able to change the blinking time anytime we want without changing components, the solution is using potentiometers instead of fixed values resistors. Different LEDs give different results as well. Now I'm going to try to make this circuit very portable so I can put it in my airplane. The 555 chip comes in two different packages, the SMD or surface mounted device and the true hole or the most common one which is a little bit bigger. I'm going to use prototyping PCBs to make this circuit and I'm going to dare to use the SMD version. Due to its size it's a lot more complicated to solder it and make the connections. After a long process I finished the board and I tested it for the first time. And it doesn't work. So this board is very small, so there is a chance that I did a mistake and I did some bridges on the soldering process. Here you can see how small the connections are, so if something is touching where it's not supposed to, then it's gonna be very hard to find it. I tried to fix it, but it didn't work. So the next time I did the circuit with a standard size 555. As you can see on this bigger board, it's a lot easier to solder the components. Translating what we did on the breadboard to this PCB is very easy, so the process is very straightforward. The only thing left is to connect the pin headers. This is to connect the battery to power our system. If you don't have pin headers, then you can use the legs of capacitors. But I strongly recommend pin headers because they connect very nice to the batteries. Pay attention to the soldering bridges. If you find one, just use a knife to cut the path. So now my circuit is ready, I will test it. And it does work. There's just a little problem and it's that I forgot to put the diode. And that's why I burned one of these ships when I was connecting the polarity incorrectly. So I changed the 555 for a new one and put the diode in place. And now it does work very nice. Even when I connect the battery incorrectly, nothing happens. When I connect it correctly again, everything works fine. It's time to put the whole system working in our airplane. In this case I'm going to use a small RC airplane. This system is very small and lightweight, 
so it can be used in many RC airplanes. I'm going to solder these high power LEDs that are capable of 1 watt. The idea is to make a very bright flash and that's why I'm using these LEDs. This system can be used in many different platforms like RC cars, boats, drones and many others. So the whole system is ready and it's time to go and fly it. These flashing LEDs make the airplane more visible in the air. And this was a very nice project. In the next video I will teach you how to program LEDs with Arduino so we can control them from our ready control. We will turn it on and off and also select different patterns. For now I hope you liked this video and if you did consider subscribing and also leaving a like. And I'll see you in the next project.